Hey, what's up, guys? We're back. Uh, another installment of the 412 Baitco unbagging. Uh, I guess that makes sense. It's been a while. Got this one in like three weeks ago, maybe. Haven't had time to open it. Wanted to do a video. Shout out to Don, 412Baitco.com. 412. Sorry, you northerners. Um, got Clinton here with me. He was the one behind the camera last time. Yeah, he's black. Check that out. Um, we're going to check. We're going to start this video off the Texas way. Nice Lone Star light. Had to get you wet, man. Come on. You ready for this? You gonna be able to hang? I'm ready. Let's do it. Alright. Alright. Ready to do this. So we got some new stuff this time around. Got a couple things that we had last time. Uh, really some things that we use the shit out of. Uh, and a few things that Don has recently come out with in the past little while. We're gonna bring it all out and we'll kind of talk through it. Maybe try and do a little bit of a how we how we use them as well uh, this time around instead of just talking about stuff. So. Clinton, go ahead and grab something, man. All right. Check it out. What you got here? You got all sorts of goodies now. All right, the first thing we got here is the Dreamsicle tubes. The color is Dreamsicles. These would be good used on a Texas rig. Put them on a jig head. Fish them weightless. Fish them on a Carolina rig. How do you suppose you're going to fish them next time you go out? I'm thinking most likely I'm probably going to Texas rig them. I think that's going to be the biggest... Uh, Biggest presentation that we're going to use down here. We haven't fished these yet, um, but we got those dreamsicles, and I got some watermelon red. We got a couple, couple, couple small ponds of water that we like to fish down here, like like the watermelon red. Um, we got this that I'm pretty excited to try out. It's, a, it's going to be a dreamsicle jig, swim jig. Uh, Don came out with these not too long ago. A lot of people you probably already know about them, but we're looking at trying them out here pretty soon for the first time I'm most likely strictly gonna fish these with a Yoda on them um, the Yoda works really, real good as a trailer I really don't think that that I'm gonna use anything else I know a lot of guys will fish them fish them behind a, a free worm or a or a, a free minnow but we'll rig one up real quick show you what it looks like I really like using these Yodas as trailers we use the Yodas for uh, swim jigs we'll use them for chatter baits spinner baits we do a lot of different trailers with those Yodas. They look really good. We always go with the uh, with the four and a halfs down here. We usually go a little bit bigger presentation uh, down here in Texas. We're fishing for largemouth, so I know a lot of guys will use the smaller Yodas up north on the spinner baits, but I think that's more of a fast-moving water guy for a smallmouth up north. But one thing I really like about these uh, swim jigs here is the hook keeper or the bait keeper that Don has here on the back. Oh, go ahead and. Run it through there. You always want to make sure you know where it's going to come out. Make sure it's streamlined. You can trim them down if you need to, but for the most part, like you said, we like to fish a lot bigger baits down here. Sometimes I'll take the skirt. You can separate the top half of the skirt here. I like to trim off, you know, so much, and it kind of gives it like a gill flaring out look when you do that. But right there, you got the Dream School on Dream School color combination. That's going to be a killer bait when he goes goes to throw it down here. Right now, we just had a whole lot of rain. I just came back from Choke Canyon today. There's a whole bunch of flooded brush. Swim through, uh, this through all that flooded brush down there. Fish it slow. Fish it fast. Fish it on the bottom. What else you got there? Another thing we got in. Something we've used before, just not in this color. Uh, came out with this Dreamsicle color that we've been talking about here after the last order that I placed. And... Free worms is something we fish a lot down here. Uh, we'll fish the four and a half and we'll fish the six inch. A lot of times what, what we end up doing with them is nine times out of ten, we're going to drop shot them free worms. Uh, looks like Clinton got himself a already rigged up drop shot. I'll show oh, you how thing. we're going to rig these up. Um, we're almost nine times out of ten going to fish these free worms on drop shot. Don likes to go ahead and uh, he likes to 
fish them weightless? Uh, I think he likes to nose hook them, fish them on, fish them on the weight, weightless rigs, but we generally try and fish them off the bottom. So my drop shot setup when I like to fish a drop shot, right now I've got a Berkley Nano Fill. I got 10 pound test Berkley Nano Fill. Attach the smallest swivel you can find. That's just something I like to do, especially with a spinning rod. It keeps that, uh, keeps that line twist out of there. So you don't have to worry about line twists and you know you go go to throw it and you got a wind knot and everything. I personally like to fish, you know, I don't know, say about a two foot leader, eighteen inch leader, with fluorocarbon since it's a white braid. The swivel on top right there, uni to uni, come down. This one's only about five inches or so. I usually only like to go about to eight inches at the max when I fish my drop shot. I'm really big on the the VMC owner or the VMC hooks. The one knot, I like to use the one knot uh, EWG. And then I come down about five to eight inches, and I use, I normally throw like a quarter ounce weight. Got the uh, little ball weight there. Anyways, you just rig it up like you normally would a Texas worm or Texas rig worm. Run it through. Come up, bury your hook, Texas rig, Texas pose, and there's your there's your bait right there, and that's usually how I fish that thing. And that thing, when you're fishing on the bottom, it has killer action, that worm does right there. You can sit there and shake that tail in the water, and I mean, it just goes crazy. You can dead stick it, and if there's any current, or even when it's just sitting there, that tail is always moving. That's probably my, my favorite favorite method, especially fishing Don's baits, is uh, these free worms. And I don't know, man, I've caught a lot of fish on it. Yeah, we've caught a lot of fish on them. I think a lot I've of got big fish, too. a lot of big fish. Even, even on a small bait, we like to fish a lot of big 10 and a half, 12, even up to like 15 inch ribbon tail worms down here for big, big largemouth bass. And, and I think I've caught just as big a bass on a free worm five inches long than I have on a, uh, on a 10, 12, 15 inch worm down here. Uh, the action you get out of these baits is just, it's, it's unprecedented. Um, can't can't beat it for what you're getting you're getting a guy making baits out of his basement i mean come on now you got a guy that's down here busting his butt making a bait for for everyone like you and me and what else do you uh what else do you want out of a guy um another something i got here this time around to try out i got some 412 toads um i got them in in the money which is a green and we got them in a watermelon red um uh, these colors look absolutely phenomenal. You cannot judge these colors by uh, by how they look on the on the website. The pictures do them justice, but when you put them in their hands, you would not believe how much different the colors look in your hand than when they look on the website. If you're questionable about a color and you don't know whether or not that color is going to work in your water. If you've ever fished anything similar to that color, that color's gonna work. I can promise you it. These colors have more pop than any other color I've ever seen from any other bait company. Anything big shelf, anything that you've seen at Bass Pro Shops or Academy or God forbid Walmart if you buy your baits from Walmart. Uh, I, I can't explain to you how much detail and definition in these colors there is. Don works very hard on these colors. He works very hard on, on giving you a product that, that you just can't find anywhere else. You cannot find it from another company. The one thing I really like about these tails right off the bat is that hook slot right there. It's not real narrow. It's not real deep. Probably fish like a 3 aught EWG hook on it. Keep it real streamlined. It has a nice keel to it, so it'll probably keep it real nice up on the water. Streamlined and... I really dig in the way that he has these uh these paddle tails concave versus just normally straight like how you normally get them. They catch a lot of water and keep a uh, keep a lot of uh. What's the word I'm looking for? Action? No, not action. Um, resistance. Keep a lot of resistance on there, so it keeps it up on the surface more so than down below. And you're just dragging your bait. You got to reel a lot faster to keep it up there. Probably be able to fish this real slow like. I think it's gonna be real good. We fish, we fish frogs as much as we can down here, but it seems like the places that we go fish, the vegetation that's there, we usually don't find too much of a frog bite. We usually end up getting them on a jig, uh, punching through mats. We've got some lakes and rivers with with pads and and whatnot on it, but 
and, and the majority of the time we've got a jig rigged on. We don't usually throw too many frogs. We just don't have that hollow body frog action that, you know, popping a frog across the top. So I'm really hoping with these these toads here that we got, we'll, uh, we'll be able to get them swimming across the top rather than trying to pop them across the top with a hollow body, you know, worrying about them sinking and whatnot. So I think we ought to be ought to be set up pretty good once we get this uh, flood water out of the way. For those of you who want to, who are curious about how to rig these tubes here, I've got, I think it's like a 3 8 3 8 uh, maybe 5 16 Oh, hold on. Uh, tungsten on here, and I got a 4 out VMC hook, extra wide gap. I like to, I don't really like to throw the, the real heavy wire. I like the light wire in case you get hung up. You know, especially with my drop shot, you get hung up fishing deep. I, I power fish my drop shot a lot. So when I'm power fishing uh, or just fishing in heavy cover, I like to be able to get my bait and my hook back so that that thin wire hook will bend a lot easier, but you can just Texas rig this tube here and run it through the nose. You always want to want to go down at least about the width of the shank right there and get your, your knot there kind of buried so you aren't getting nicked when you're out there fishing in that heavy cover. I have less chance of breaking off or something, fishing around rock or whatever you're fishing. This hook's just a little big for this. I'd normally probably throw like a three-out hook on this smaller tube, but this four-out hook will work. You can come up and rig it just like that Texas rig. That's going to be a killer color out there fishing that clear water, I'm thinking. We also got the uh, So another the tube we got, red. we got watermelon red. One thing I want to point out, Don's got two different kinds of tubes going with him. He's got this one, which is a Texas rig tube. So you can see the body is hollow. It'll pinch all the way down, but you come up on near the top, the top is a solid fill. So that's going to be real easy to help your hook stay in there a lot better when you're Texas rigging. He's got another one that's going to be a hollow body all the way up and that's going to give you the uh, the ability to weightless rig that kind of swim it through your column of water wherever you're fishing. Uh, just something to point out there is two different styles of these tubes. We went with the Texas rig style just because that's the one that we're normally going to fish. Um, uh, we don't we don't really fish much rivers everything we fish is really lakes or dammed rivers. Uh, we don't fish a whole lot of current so we're not really going into the uh, situations that y'all got sometimes up north when you're fishing for smallmouth. Looks like Clint is going to bring out a Yoda and show you how we're going to just rig that Yoda up. If basically a Texas rig on those Yodas. You can swim them across the bottom even without a jig. These Yodas right here are so versatile. I put them on the back of a buzz bait. Give me a little more resistance uh, to keep that bait up higher on the water column. And I can fish it a lot slower, reel a lot slower, keep it in that strike zone a lot longer versus just buzzing it across the top and missing fish that might be there. You can swim them, you can uh, you can hop them across the bottom, fish it like right here. I'd probably hop this guy along the bottom as a Texas rig, but then at times I might see a piece of cover or a dock or something that I'm fishing and I want to just swim it like a swim jig. Sometimes I'll put a, a peg on here and peg that weight, or you can put it in on a jig head. I mean, these things, I've caught so many fish on these, these baits right here. They have come through when, when the tournament fishing is tough and I could try a swim jig with a with a regular paddle tail on the back and not catch fish and I'll put this Yoda on here and there's something about it, something about that tail action that will nine times out of, out of ten produce a fish for me when the, t when the conditions are tough or when the bite's just right but that other baits just won't. Um, this bait right here, I've, I've heard a lot of guys from the team talk about in winter time when people are dragging little storm swim baits or something on the bottom just real slow dragging them and they aren't getting bit. I've come behind them and just mopped up by putting this on there on a jig head, just like the storm would, but it's built in, and just slowly dragging it. Something about that tail just sweeping across the bottom, and it has a little more of a subtle action in that big wide paddle tail that they like sometimes, especially on really heavy pressured lakes. But there it is on a Texas rig. I mean, it's a good looking color right there. I can't wait to throw this in some clear water this year. We've thrown all these baits except for the, except for the toes, except for the tubes. We've thrown all of them. We've caught fish on every but every bait that I've gotten from Don here. Um, like I said, the color is extraordinary. You cannot match the color. You can't beat the color. You're going to see people all over the place trying to copy these baits. It's already happening now, and I can't tell you how bad it's going to happen in the next few years. Uh, but this Dream Sickle color, man, I tell you, this Dream Sickle has blown up. I can't tell you how many times I've seen this Dream Sickle color catching fish for people that fish every other day of their life and they turn around and catch fish with this dream sickle 
fishermen start catching personal bests out of a river that they've been fishing for years. Um, like I said, these toads, these toads look amazing. They're so much different than what a normal frog that you're going to fish on top of pads looks. And down here, like I said, we don't get that normal hollow body frog bite. I'm really hoping that these frogs are going to do it for us. But even, even on top of pads, if we go fish just around vegetation, I think we're still going to get hit. You know, I think they're going to be so versatile. They're going to be a really good topwater bait that, that just isn't presented uh, around here, around these parts. I mean, we do get a we do get a fairly decent hollow body, but sometimes when they don't want the hollow body, you can follow through with the, uh, you know, with the, with a soft plastic frog. And I fish horny toads, I fish ribbits, I fish all those. But these right here, I think, are going to have that that little bit more of an advantage over all the rest of the competition out there. Um, back to the free worms here. I honestly, my biggest bass on these right here, drop shotting them up in Austin. I've caught a I caught a nine pounder on those. These, these baits right here, there's been times I've fished up in different lakes and tournaments when I've thrown 10 other different worms. Trick worms, um, speed worms, speed worms, I've thrown uh, chompers, I've thrown all sorts of different worms. I couldn't get bit until I put a free uh, free worm on there. And something about this worm that I think it's a tail really that just drives Some, me crazy. Something to point out though, Don does have two, two different versions of the free worm as well. He's got a terminate series. And he's got a standard formula. Your terminate series is going to be really heavy. It sinks. It has a lot more action and it's softer. Uh, your standard formula is going to be a little bit more buoyant. Still has pretty good action, but it's going to be a little bit more dur uh, durable. So for a lot of you guys that are just, you know, weekend fishermen, you go out, have a good time with some buddies or or whatever. Standard formula may be the way to go for it. You're not going to lose as many baits. I can't tell you. I have had a lot of free worms get bit in half. It happens. They're a soft, sinking bait. That's just the way they are. Um, but when you look at these tournament series baits and the action that they have in the tail and how soft that body is and the way the fish can't even tell that it's not a, something they're looking to eat. You know, you get a lot of times you're fishing fishing other, other kind of baits. Fish may pick it up and they're going to munch on it figure out it's not a bait that they want to eat. They can't tell that with these, in my opinion. I think the tournament series is the way to go. Even if I'm not fishing a tournament, I'm still going to fish the tournament series. I haven't. I don't buy any of the standard formulas anymore. I prefer the tournament series, and I think that uh, the way that they, uh, the way the formula is made, I think is, is 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 the key thing there that I'm trying to get to. They sink good, which is good for the way we like it. They don't they don't sit there and float straight up in our water column when we're drop shotting them, which isn't you know that ain't going to look realistic to us. They kind of hang out. We can bump them, we can shake them. This one here that I, just, that I just showed you is a Green Pumpkin Special. Um, this, I guess, is, would be the best way to describe this would be Don's version of a Cinco. It's very salt impregnated. It, uh, the closest thing I can describe it to, I fished a lot of Cinco's in my day, and honestly, hands down, most of the time I go straight to a Gary Yamamoto. They just, you can't beat them. But this is the closest thing out of all the competitors I've fished. This is the closest one that has the same sink rate and same action and softness. I mean, this thing is so soft right here that uh, that compares to it. What else you got? I think that's about it, man. I think we're gonna, gonna wrap it up and wrap it up. Drinking some yeah, more beer, drink some more beer, time. have a good time, get ready for the next fishing trip, whenever that may be. Got to wait for some of these lakes to drain some water out. Yeah, I don't think we can. A lot uh, of rain here. Can't even launch a boat in some of these boat ramps right now. And lake we normally fish tournaments on. It's got so much water on it. You can't even put a. Uh, you can't even put a boat in the boat ramp because the water's up in the parking lot right now. So that and the debris and everything yep. else. They got a lot of lakes around here that are closed off. Yep. So, so uh, until the next I think time. That's it. We'll see y'all next time. Yeet.